No, Miles. We got playoff basketball. Um, obviously, at the time of recording this, the first day of playing games already happened. Second one is going to be happening tonight. So we are going to be giving our playoff predictions. I think me and Miles are both kind of – it's a toss-up on whatever team we feel like that will make the play-in. But we do have to talk, fortunately, a little bit about our Miami Heat, but that will be at the end. We are going to be giving just our playoff predictions right now and just mainly some big storylines for you guys. So one is – the most intriguing matchup of this whole playoffs. And th- there's a lot of good ones, but man, I I honestly feel like the one that's going to get the most headlines just because the story narrative behind it. Some people mention it and I do believe it. The Cavs and the Knicks. I feel like that's a very good series. Yeah, that that's, that's going to be an interesting one because for, you know, as much as I like this Cleveland team, I, I've mentioned it uh, multiple times uh, on this podcast. We had, you know, uh, the teams that we thought were legit contenders and it wouldn't surprise us if they won or at least made it to the NBA finals. And I had Cleveland up there. I At the time I mentioned, I still think that they're kind of a player short. But since uh, I believe since January 1st, uh, Isaac Okoro has been shooting over 40 percent from three for Cleveland, which I mean, that's a game changer if they can have you know, that one person that's going to be able to knock down threes because, you know, it's going to be a problem dealing with not only Garland, you have Mitchell, and we've seen what Mitchell's been able to do uh, throughout his career in the playoffs. And I'm just excited to see how the pairing of Mobley and Allen fares off in the playoffs because, you know, it's it's going to cause some issues, uh, you know, spacing offensively in the playoffs because teams are going to pack in the paint and dare them to make threes. But defensively, like, it's going to be a really, really – hard time for anybody scoring against them like even the top teams even milwaukee even boston like they're gonna have problems scoring in the paint with those two monsters in there the only thing that will help the knicks is if when they go small because i think their small ball lineup i actually love like how fast they are on offense once they go small so that that will be something to see but man the storyline of the knicks how they were so close to getting donovan mitchell and it just didn't happen and he went to the Cavs. The one thing I think will be the difference maker is the bench and how you mentioned in our awards, you talked about quickly. To me, what will like help the Cavs a lot, Karis LeVert needs to show up. Like Karis LeVert has to be that guy when he was in Indiana and uh, Brooklyn. Like his last couple of years of Brooklyn when he was getting like 15 or 20 points. If he can do that for the Cavs, I think they could win. I really do. I think they'll win in six games because I don't know if the Knicks have the firepower off the bench. I feel like they have a a physical enough lineup that can compete with the Cavs starting five. It would just be the bench. That would be the only thing because Quickly has been awesome this year off the bench because, hell, if if Quickly is getting 20 off the bench, the Cavs need to find some way to negate that. And if Okoro, if he's still shooting good, that would help. But it has to be Karis LeVert because he has been a part of the rotation this whole year. Yeah, and... My only concern with the Cleveland team is just a combination of youth and, you know, inexperience. inexperience. And now you have to play the Knicks and go to Madison Square Garden and win a playoff game in Madison Square Garden, you know, one of the most storied uh, buildings that we have in the NBA. But I, I, I think that this is going to be a really close matchup. And this is like what a four or five should be, like two teams where you're like, okay, like that are very could, even. Yeah, I could see this series going either way. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a really fun series to watch. It's honestly, it reminds me of uh, the Atlanta New York series where you know we got the whole ice tray uh, nickname started because he went in there and kind of ran New York for a little bit. But and how Trey Young lives rent free in Knicks fans. Exactly. Ever since then, but I, I, I do think that this one is a better Knicks team, and I. I'm not gonna lie; it, it does pain me to say this a little bit. I I like watching this Knicks team; like they they They're are fun. fun. And Brunson has had some monster games against Cleveland. Remember, he had the 20 points in the first quarter, and mm-hmm. uh, Mitchell matched them with 20 points in the first quarter as well. So and I, I think, had a great year too. I do want to see. I think that's going to be an important X factor because I don't think he's played since that game where he went out in the second uh, quarter mm-hmm. against Miami. So his health, I know, obviously. We should have a couple more days before the games actually get started. So his health, I think, will be uh, a big X factor as far as, uh, you know, what New York can do against Cleveland. And especially I think they're going to need him because, you know, he's going to have to score against that big uh, that big front court of uh, Mobley and Allen. 
it's going to be tough. So we have that. I think we could give some predictions just on the East. So we're, we're not going to talk about the Bucks series. Whoever they play in the eight, I'm pretty sure we have the Bucks winning. Yeah. So we'll just keep it simple. We'll say the winner amount of games. Two seven Boston uh matchup Boston, Boston, Boston and Atlanta. I'm gonna Boston say Boston in like five. Boston in five for me too. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna beat Atlanta in five games. Now we got Philly and Brooklyn. So I so I see this series going two ways. I see either Philly just running through Brooklyn with Embiid and Embiid dropping like almost 40 a game because I, I think he's gonna be on a mission especially to confirm, you know, that he was the MVP of the league this year. And, you know, Brooklyn, you know, was a, it was a cute story that they remained competitive after, you know, trading Ky- uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving uh, in the middle of this season. But I just don't think they – I just don't think they have enough firepower. However, I do think it is interesting that they have a lot of wing depth and they okay. have, you know, guys like Dorian Finney-Smith uh, – Mikhail. Royce O'Neal, Mikhail, Cam Johnson, all guys that can throw at James Harden, who we have known. is not a playmaker. He's not a scorer anymore. And notoriously, we've known to come up short in the big He's moments in the playoffs. So I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if this one is a, is a quick series where I could see Philadelphia honestly sweeping Brooklyn, or I could see, you know, Harden having a couple bad games, and next thing you know, we're in a game six. That's what I see. I have Philly in six. Yeah, I think I think six is a good amount because uh, I do think that Brooklyn is a sneaky good matchup, uh, matches up well uh, with Philadelphia. It's good. And then we got uh, Cavs and the Knicks. I'm going to be honest, I have Cavs in seven. Okay, I was going to say six or seven. I think just because there's there's not really a lot separating these teams, I'm probably going to go Cavs in six. I think that their defense will uh, cause enough problems for New York. And then once you get really past uh, Brunson and uh, Randall, I, I'm curious to see how the Knicks are able to consistently score in that series. Okay, fair enough. And now let's head to the West. Now, most intriguing playoff matchup, we could have said any of the West, but we went with the East. I would say... Uh, I don't even know because, I mean... A lot of these could be upsets. That's what I'm saying. Memphis, LA, now that we have that locked in, and Memphis is going to be without Steven Adams and uh, Brandon Clark in that series. Sacramento, depth, Golden uh, State. I yeah. mean, I get that Golden State is the defending champions and that they have Steph Curry, Draymond, and Clay Thompson. But they're terrible on the road. They won nine road games this year. They won nine road games. They won nine road games. Nine road games. And that we have to give the Kings sense. credit. They've been one of the better home teams throughout the whole NBA. Light the beam, and then you know game one of that series for them to, bla- to officially break explosive. the playoff streak is going to be is going to be electric inside that building. And then, I mean, even Phoenix, L.A. Phoenix, L.A. That's I think a toss-up. Might be my favorite just because we really – like it's unprecedented for us to see one a player like Kevin Durant get traded in season, like a player that you're like, okay, this is one of that's the an off season deal. Five best players in the NBA, and then two. When do we ever see giant moves like this that happen in season work out to an NBA championship? Either it's like the first year, okay, we had to figure out the offense, you know, everything wasn't clicking. Maybe get a new coach. Then we come into that off season. You know, everybody's picking us because we have all this talent. But in season for this to work would pretty much be unprecedented. And I just – I'm fascinated by that one because you have – It's also crazy underlying story. Him and Russell Westbrook are going to play each other in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Russell Westbrook and Russell Westbrook, who's actually been important and a good piece yeah, with for the Clippers. Paul George's timetable, not knowing when he'll be back. It's basically him and Kawhi against Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. And then you have Chris Paul, who used to play for the Clippers, and I don't know who's more synonymous with choking, either Chris Paul or the Los Angeles Clippers. Man, that that's actually a very good question. I, I don't want to dive that, too deep into so that like, one. It's like the battle of the chokers for this one, but you know somebody has to win this one. But that that one is my most favorite, and you know I know we're gonna get to our our predictions a little bit later, but I I love Phoenix, LA, and then I mean Memphis. 
versus the Lakers is a That's good probably one the because, best series. And because we had the off court drama already with uh, Shannon Sharp and the Lakers <laughs> and the Grizzlies matchup already. Then you have the whole John Moran fiasco that happened this February with, you know, him uh, being suspended by the team and the NBA. And, you know, Memphis is not at 100%, but, you know, according to Jaw, I'm fine in the West. Yeah. I'm and fine in the West. So here comes the king for you. The man, the only thing is like, if this was last year's Memphis team, I would pick Memphis in a heartbeat just because they would be healthy. They're, I don't have to worry about the depth because I like Jaron Jackson Jr., but I don't know how you can stop Anthony Davis because when Anthony Davis shows up, he's like, I think we could agree. He's a top five talent in basketball when he shows up. Because yeah, how can like you stop? Game. How can you stop basically a, a guard that's over seven feet tall? Because he can move like a guard. He has shooting ability. He's not that bad of a passer with the basketball. He can get to the rim. He can post score. He's great defensively. Like it's it's hard to stop him. And then, I mean, with the way how the Lakers' depth is going with D'Lo, Austin Reeves, but is Kiel it actually Beasley, good though? Is it actually good? Because like. D'Lo had a stinker yesterday. He had a stinker, but I also think it was because the T-Wolves know him. They know his strengths and his weaknesses, so it's kind of hard to not. I was wondering during the game game if they had had some second doubts about trading for D'Lo instead of just trading for Mike Conley straight up. But I I do think D'Lo has uh, more potential than Conley, especially considering age. And, you know, I think Conley is what he is at at this point. D'Lo is a solid playmaker. But uh, I just, I just, I, th- I think definitely they have better depth than what they had before when they had uh Russell Westbrook and uh, you know the depth was really questionable. But I feel like it's just hot and cold because like Beasley, I've known him to be a good shooter, but he's been super streaky since joining the Lakers. He's um, either really good or so bad. It was like can't hit, can't even hit the rim. And then Vanderbilt, I love for defensive purposes, but then yesterday in the playing game they took him off to go for Rui, which, you know, Rui should be a three and D guy, but it's like, all right, am I getting any of the three at yeah. uh, any point? But I mean, he, he did make a couple uh, yesterday against Minnesota. He and will then, play defense. So they do have to give him. Credit yeah. For that. Yeah. You know, he, and he's, he's versatile uh, defense too, where he can play against, you know, a smaller guy or a bigger guy. So, and then Reeves is sneakily really, really important for them. Yeah. I mean, he he might hit free agency this offseason, and who knows what type of contract he might demand. And I mean, the Lakers have his early bird rights, but and especially if he can complain at the level that he's playing at now and in the playoffs, like there's going to be teams lining up to try to offer him the contract. Yeah, a lot of good teams. So I think we could go straight to prediction. So we'll start with the four or five matchup Phoenix, LA. Ah, bro, I'm going to be on. I don't like saying the amount of games that I'm going to say, but I feel like all of them are going to be close. I say Phoenix in five. Ooh, okay. I feel like they're all going to be close games. The only thing that hurts is Paul George. I don't know what's going to happen. So I, I, I'm going to zag here just because I think this is desperation time for the Clippers. Like this is it. Like if you don't, if you get eliminated in the first round, this whole Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, experiment of them teaming up is a failure like this is it like they're out of excuses i get Kawhi was out this all of last year but this is it like you've had too many you had the bubble where you flamed out this is it so i'm gonna go clippers in six yeah it's tough because i feel like all those games that they play are going to be close and it'll come down to like the last shot so i'm gonna go clippers in six I, i don't know why i'm feeling a clippers victory in this series I, I just – I think it's it's going to be back against the wall. You have Ty Lu, who we've known has been great at adjustments. We've seen it in the yeah. playoffs. And then I don't know – I'm just going to bet on the Chris Paul choking factor. It might not be this round. I might be a, a series too early, but I think it it's going to come at some point. I think it's just too perfect right now. Like it doesn't make sense that a team with Chris Paul, Devin, uh, Kevin Durant, uh, Devin Booker – aren't going to win the NBA championship. Like, but, yeah. you know, you have to factor in that stuff happens. So I'm going to go Clippers in six. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't, man. It's like I said, if Paul George was there, I would pick the Clippers in seven, but with just him being out, I'm like, man, I don't know which Russell Westbrook I'm going to get every night. So I don't know if Kawhi can outpower Booker and KD. He's so going to have to be I, the Coachella. Co- 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 yeah. Co- 
<laughs> so that's that's going to be there. Now we got Warriors Kings. Oh man. I so I think this is the most fascinating because you can look at it in in a couple different ways. It's like so what matchup would be amazing for the second round? Mm-hmm. And that would be Golden State LA. If they if both of those teams picked yeah. up that and Curry LeBron second round matchup, okay. Any NBA fan would want that, right? Then you look at it and it's like but do I really want this Golden State team to actually be a dynasty? Yeah. I I'm be honest, bro. I'm tired of them. Uh me too, but bro, I I have Warriors in six. I do think they are going to steal a road game. I feel like they can. Well, because they we have can... the longest active streak of uh, winning at least one road game in every playoff series since. Yeah. Uh... I feel like they had to steal it because the inexperience of the Kings is gonna come back to bite them. I think eventually we saw it last year when they played Memphis. Yeah. So I I feel like we'll see one of those games and the only thing I would pick the Kings if their defense was just more consistent. Yeah, that that's my yeah. thing. I just I know they'll so. be able to score. Like there's no problem. You have Malik Monk who's gonna who will drop he's gonna get buckets. De'Aaron Fox, he's been awesome this year. Sabonis, he's been awesome. Herder, um, Keegan Murray, like they have guys Even who Barnes. I think Barnes is Barnes. super solid to have in a playoff series. Yeah, so like I mean they have the players to win. I just think the inexperience is gonna really come back to hurt them. So I, I have Warriors in six. I feel like they'll steal one road game. And then they'll be able to, you know, win out at home. Yeah. So I think for me, the X factor is, are we getting a fully 100% healthy and back to normal Andrew Wiggins? If you tell me that. That that would be tough. I think game, the first two games will be tough, but I think game three, he'll, he'll be back. If you tell me that, honestly, I might go Warriors in like six. If not, look, it's going to take it's going to take Wiggins a little bit. Sacramento in seven? I'm not mad at that. I'm not. Sacramento in seven, winning, winning at home? That, that would be crazy. Would... I, I do love that matchup. I, 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 if I was Sacramento, like if this was a, if this was football and like this was just one game, Sacramento would be a team I would be leaning on heavy because it's yeah. like no one believes in us. We're the higher no. seeded team. The Warriors are the favorites, like for the series. Like this is disrespect, but since it is a best of a best seven. of seven series, and you have to get to four first, like I, I, I just think that the, the continuity, the, the championship DNA, and the fact that Sacramento largely f- is playing for most of these guys in their first playoff series, I know Sabonis has been in a couple before in Indiana, but it's for most of these he guys. He hasn't won. Yeah, and even Herter. Like, I know Herter's been in a couple. He was on that ride to the Eastern Conference Finals, but it's not like he's going to be making and breaking every play. But I, I do like the fact, like you mentioned, that Sacramento just has so many guys. Like, yeah. they have guys that I'm perfectly fine with throwing in a playoff series. Even Davion Mitchell, I might not be fine with his offense, but – Defensively, I, uh, he'll help. And especially defensively on Curry, like yeah, I would sign was, me up for that. Like that's but one then of the we also have to know, bro. That, at the end of the day, that's Steph Curry, bro. Well, Once he, he gets, I hot, don't expect him to I lock don't think him down. Anyone can stop yeah. him. Yeah, I don't expect him to lock him down. But it is useful to have him out there, you know, chasing him around for twenty five minutes a game. And never forget, the Sacramento Kings do employ a one time Steph Curry stopper in one Matthew Della Vadova. I mean, if that could happen, then go ahead. Like, um, man, that's just I you think, gotta throw your hands up. <laughs> I think it would be great for basketball if the Kings did move on. I think it would be great for basketball because for anyone that hasn't watched the Kings this year, they actually are a fun team to watch. They they legit will play like new age style basketball, run up the floor, get some threes up, and attack the basket still. Yeah, because you and. They actually, like, as you said, Mike Brown, he's really done a great job with this team. I mean, I would like to see them improve in the offseason a little bit, but I don't know how they're going to, considering they have all these guys and they're in such good roles, but other guys are going to want bigger roles. But that's a different topic for a different day. Now we'll do the Denver who and against whoever is the eight seed at this point. I think we could be honest. I'm, I'm going to take Denver, Denver in that series. I, the only thing that scares me, I'm going to go Denver, but just the way they finished the season did yeah, not inspire bad. me at all. Did not inspire me at all. It's I I love their they chances against Minnesota. 
the Pelicans. Uh, so, uh, it would just be if Zion came back. If Zion came back, obviously that'd be just a complete game. That would be better to deal with him, but it doesn't seem like he's coming back anytime. Yeah, soon. he's not coming back. And then OKC, I love OKC, but they're just they're not ready yet. That's just how I feel. So I'm gonna take Denver in that one. And then the last series. LA versus Memphis, and we mentioned before, there's no Brandon Clark, there's no Valanciunas. Oh Steven no, Adams. Yeah. yeah, Steven Adams. My bad. Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, and it's only Jaron Jackson against Anthony Davis. So I'm just like, yeah. and like how we talked about their end of the game rotation lineup, how it would be um, Triple J, Brandon Clark, Brooks, Bane, Jaw. Now you essentially take Clark out of the picture. Yeah. And yeah. then the Lakers, man. The Lakers have been really good since the trade deadline. And as much it's as I don't... It's crazy how, how their season flipped. It's so crazy. Yeah. But it's crazy, man. I'm going Lakers in seven. Lakers in seven, man. I feel like... I, I just feel like they're riding that hot wave right now. They're, they they're are playing definitely... their best basketball at the right time. I feel like they can... I feel like they can steal a game from Memphis and then... And I feel like it will be game seven. That's when they steal it. They are definitely playing their best basketball right now. LeBron is, I mean, even with his foot injury that, you know, he said he's not 100% from, he's still, I mean, even that play in game, he was still the best player on the floor. The only thing is, is that they do rely on him and AD a lot. Yeah, like, so towards I'm, the end of that overtime game, LeBron was absolutely exhausted. Yeah. So it's that's out. why I'm giving like seven. I feel like there will be games where LeBron and Anthony Davis aren't just there, but there'll yeah. be those games where they just win and people will be like, bro, why did we doubt them? Yeah, I really just think it comes down to the supporting cast because, you know, like I said, I think, you know, the pieces obviously fit better together than what they had prior. I think the depth is better, but then like, you know, last night's game, it's like, all right, I get that, you know, he's been around for a while. He's played in some big games for you guys, but really shooters who's taken that last three like really okay yeah. all right but credit and, to lebron he does what he's always been doing he makes the right basketball play and that was the right play i mean shooter was left wide open and shout out to shooter he made that shot you know straight straight cash so i i i, I just i just i just i think it's going to be a really big series for the role players and you know how shaq's always calling them the other guys you know like yeah. what are the other guys going to do and yep you know, Vanderbilt, I think, is going to be an interesting player in this series because are you going to have him guard Bane? Is he going to guard Jaw? Is he going to potentially guard Jaren I think Jackson probably Jr.? Bane. I feel like they might want to get Schroeder and maybe D'Lo on Jaw, even though it might be a, a clear mismatch. If you just make it Jaw, like you have to be Jaw instead of the other guys, I feel like that would be better because Bane is he's a, still a scary attempt from three. Like he can yeah. hurt you from three. Well, and this, I was going to say, I think this is a big series for Memphis because they have know, to prove themselves. They have to prove themselves. Their ESPN is going to play that clip of Jaw saying, you know, I'm fine in the West 6,000 times before every single game. So he he's going to have to deal with that. And, you know, whether it was because they didn't put enough on the table or they just didn't think the time was now. Kevin Durant did get traded, who we all think would be a great fit for that team. OG Ananobi was, it seemed like available at the trade deadline and whether they didn't want to include more draft picks, they didn't want to put players on their team from this year to get that trade done. They decided that they're going to ride it out with their big three that they've all drafted with Jaw, Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. So if that's, you know, your big three and you believe in them and, you know, you're going to make, you're going to uh, get pieces to fit around those guys and not, you know, trade from one of those three and try to get, you know, an upgrade on one of those guys, then you should win a first round playoff series when you're the two seed and they're the seven. I get that you have an injury to both of your centers. As far, well, you know, one and a half centers, depending on what uh, you label Brandon Clark as a little yeah. small, but I, I think this is a huge, huge series for Memphis. And however, I'm going to go Memphis in six games. And I think we get a huge John Morant series, man, that I'm not mad at that. So I think we'll end this with our finals predictions. So NBA finals predictions. Uh, we'll we'll put two. One that we want to see. Okay. And one that we think we'll see. 
So the one I want to see, I feel like this will be great for the game of basketball one because we'll have a new champion. And the storyline around this would be awesome. I want the Denver Nuggets to face the Philadelphia 76ers. Whoa, that would be awesome. And B versus Jokic. <laughs> The last would have blew my mind with that one. <laughs> now, I feel like that would be a great finals matchup. If MB if Embiid wins the MVP this year, and then you have Jokic, the last two MVPs assembly just going at it, it's like, all right, this one proves who's better. And then whoever comes out on top, that's the best center in basketball. Yeah. So I, that's the one I would I want to see Sixers Nuggets in the finals, but the one I feel like we're gonna get. I feel like it's going to be the Bucks, and I think they're going to face off against Phoenix. Ooh, that's the one you think. Bucks, Phoenix, get? and then a rematch. I think the Bucks win again, even with Durant. <clears throat> it that will be the thing. It will be the chemistry that they yeah. didn't get enough games in, or I feel like they'll be close. It would just be like those last minutes, like uh, the yeah. chemistry part didn't work out in certain plays. And plus, I mean, bro, the Bucks have been awesome this year. I like how Bobby Portis has played. Jay has been a solid pickup for them. Yeah. Brooke Lopez having a career year. Drew is having a career year. The, Drew's been amazing. The only thing that might hold them back is maybe Middleton, because he hasn't been playing like himself. But if he could be in the game and just give him like 12 points a game, I feel like that helps out a lot. So... I, I think it will be Bucks Suns with the Bucks winning it. Okay, I respect that. The one I would want to see is Lakers Celtics. I'm not even gonna lie. I just love the history of that matchup. The fact that we've had. I want them to replay the clip iteration. of Tatum fouling LeBron and LeBron just going what? Yeah, exactly. I, I want to see that. I want to see the highlights of you know Magic and Bird, and then you know Shaq and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. And now we have LeBron versus Tatum. I think that would be a really cool matchup, especially for the league as, you know, it comes to reality that eventually we're going to not have LeBron James playing in this league, but we get to see him go up against one of the game's young superstars right now. So that that's what I would want to see as just a basketball fan. What I think we're going to see, honestly, honestly, I think we finally get the matchup that I think some of us have thought would have happened by now. Milwaukee Golden State. Milwaukee Golden State. Yeah. That, who who wins? I got Milwaukee. Bro. In my five. Yeah. It's nothing against like Golden State. It's just I don't know how Golden Giannis, State is gonna compare to yeah. the size of Milwaukee. Like for yeah. people that haven't watched the Bucks, the Bucks are a big team. They are a big team. Yeah. And like Looney is like so super solid for like an unspectacular like soup like not superstar but just for a guy that wouldn't get recognition as like a star or name brand yeah. player but like still he i i don't think he's gonna have an answer for any of the Giannis, brooke lopez or even bobby portis minutes the only thing that makes me mad is that we both picked the books to win is that we both have grayson allen getting a ring that does suck but then my guy joe ingles gets a ring who i do who I do like. I respect. Yeah, I do like that. Crowder, a guy that I liked in Miami. Jay, we love yeah. Jay. Yeah, so I can't I can't be too mad at it. I feel bad for Jay, man. This man went to the finals with the Heat. It didn't work out. Goes to the finals, the Nets here with the Suns. It doesn't work out. Then he's stuck with the Suns. And then he wait till wait till he waits a good minute and now he's with the Bucks. And imagine if he goes back, I'll be like, man, Jay. That would be crazy. It would yeah. be kind of like a, you know, well, full circle for Jay. Yeah, super full circle. The only, well, especially if he plays Miami in the first round. Oh, God. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh, man. Bro, the, the, that's the part that would hurt me the most. For anyone that doesn't know, what, me and Miles will talk more about the Heat later. We're just, we're not in the best mood to talk Too about disappointed. it. disappointed. Because we thought about this in the playing game, and then we got this. Yeah. And then now it just feels like everything is just, like, going downhill slowly and steady. Where at this point, I was like, okay, just take the drop. 
it's just like either take the drop or take the leap up. Like we've been waiting for the team from last year to show up and it's just simply not happening. Oh gosh. That, that's a whole nother topic for a different day that I'm just not ready for. But guys, thank you. This is our NBA playoff prediction. I got Bucks over um Phoenix. Yeah, Bucks over Phoenix. Miles has Bucks over Warriors. Those are our finals predictions. The finals we want. I want Denver and Philadelphia to face off in the finals. Miles wants Boston, LA. So tell us in the comments, who do you want to face in the finals and who do you think will be in the finals? We'll see you guys next episode. Peace.